Have you ever wondered why you can set the font size to 36, but also to a string value like large in Xamarin Forms in .NET MAUI? Neither did I, but now you're thinking about it, right? So let's check out how to implement that for our own custom controls with a type converter. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio for Mac 2019. You can see a file new Xamarin Forms application. Um, on the left, you can see the XAML page that comes with the default template. On the right, you can see it running on the iOS simulator. Um, now, I'm showing you this in Xamarin Forms, but this will work exactly the same in .NET MAUI as well, um, because this stuff is not going to change. It's going to be implemented there as well. Um, so, you know, just replace a couple of Xamarin Forms with .NET MAUI things and um, it should work perfectly. Now, what we're going to do, I think I'm going to switch over to some code first. Um, I already implemented a little bit of code. So let me show you that first um, here in the MyControl.cs. I've created a very, very simple control, which just inherits from a label um, and has a new property, the my text property, uh, which is a bindable property as well, um, which is not really relevant to this, but just to show you that it, how it works together with the bindable properties and all the stuff right here. Um, I got other videos on bindable properties, so um, be sure to check that out as well on my channel if you want to, you know, maybe create a custom control of your own. Um, in this case, it's just about the example of creating a little custom control and um, together with that, a type converter. So um, here we have that, and let me walk you through this very quickly. So this is the bindable property so that we can make it work with data binding as well. And we have to specify like, hey, um, we are creating this for the my text property so that it links up this bindable property with the regular property. Um, we are going to return and, and receive for setting and, and getting this um, property. We're going to use the type of string. Um, the declaring type of this bindable property is the my control. And whenever the property is changed, we have this event that triggers this thing, which is mainly needed for whenever you set the value in XAML, it's going to bypass this um, setter property right here, it's going to do internal stuff to set the property. Um, so you know, to set that initial value to the text property, we're just gonna um, have to do this. So to show you how this works, let's implement a little um, enum. So I'm going to create here a public enum, um, I don't know, subscribed status, maybe something like that. And we're going to have a couple of values here. So let's make this um, subbed. And I'm going to add the actual integer values here. So um, I'm going to set this to zero just so you can see that it that it works and where the values are come from because an enum is right, it's a kind of like string mapping to an enum value, right? So uh, to an int value, sorry. Um, so that's kind of how it works, right? And normally, if you just follow the zero, one, two, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, you don't have to specify them unless you want to do something custom here. Um, but just for you know, showing how this works, um, I'm going to do it here, not subbed, boo is one. And will sub now is two. So now I have an enum. Um, and what we're going to see is that we can use both this integer value as well as this um, text value, this string value to supply the value here. And um, we can then show whatever we want basically, but we are going to show like the, the text value here. Um, and to do that, we're going to have to use a type converter. Now I'm just going to paste this all or not paste this, I'm going to type this all in the same class in the same file right here, um, which is something of course, that you typically do not want to do, but that makes it easier to um, show you everything that's going on here. Um, so let's create a new class. Um, uh, what is it? Enum to uh, uh, text converter. Um, and you might want to name this type converter because we also have value converters, which do something slightly different. Um, this is more for the scenario where you are creating your custom control. Um, and a value converter is more where you do not have control over the control that you're uh, trying to implement, uh, but you're using data binding. I have a video on um, value converters as well. Be sure to check that out to um, really see the difference here. Um, and we're going to inherit this one from the type converter. Now, this is interesting. There is a examine forms dot type converter. There's also a system component model type converter. I think both works. Um, but you will have to override a different method. 
um, in these type converters. So I'm going to use the Xamarin Forms one, and that's also the one that's going to be in .NET MAUI. Um, I think, although they might, you know, choose to opt for the type converter that's in the .NET um, um, framework right now. Um, so it, it might be a little bit different, but the, the idea is um, very much the same. Um, so you can you can actually let IntelliSense solve this because whenever we start typing override here, you can see uh, the things that we can override from. So just choose the right one um, that, that it pops up here. Um, and here you can see these convert from here. These are deprecated since a while. Um, in Xamarin form, so we are going to have to choose the convert from invariant um, string right here because if it's this is typically used for your XAML scenarios, um, and then every value that's going to come in is going to be a string, right? And you can also do a convert back um, um, whenever you push something back from the control that's not used very often. So I'm just going to implement the convert from invariant string. Um, right here and what we then want to do is um, get that string value so we're setting a string value in our XAML um, so um, well let me show you that in a little bit we're getting that string value in our XAML um, and we want to convert that through our enum and and get the right thing out of there right so um, set that to the right value so what we can do there is um, set um, to a string description is enum Dot, oh, it doesn't know enum, so I need to let IntelliSense fix this, uh, probably using system, there we are. And I'm gonna say parse, so that's the way to kind of parse a, a, a value to uh, the uh, according um, enum value. Um, and then I have to specify the type of the enum, so I'm gonna say type type of subscribe status because that's the enum I want to parse here and the value is going to be value that we get passed in from here. So then we can say return um, description. Oh, I need to, so this gives the actual enum, so you can also do something with that, but I want to get the, the, the enum name, right? So I want to get subbed or not subbed or um, um, one of these. Um, so I just have to specify here the two string and I will get the actual name of the enum that we're getting here. Then I can return that and that will now um, be um, um, printed out on our label. Um, so now to make this work, you can set a attribute above the property here that you want to specify these values on. So so we can say here type converter um, and again then you have to set it with like the the type that it has to use and it will figure out automatically where that is um, so you can either do that by a magic string not recommended or you can just say um, type of and um, then you will get the type of this converter so actually let me copy this one and I can say type of this one and now it will know um, to to let whenever we set something here that it goes through this type converter first it will convert from will go through here and then actually call this setter right here so that we have our string value instead of um, some enum value or whatever might be coming through here I'm showing this with an enum it also works with other objects um, um, complex objects whatever you want whatever you need to do to convert that object you can do it this way now let's actually consume this so let's go back to our main page and we have all this stuff right here I didn't even update the title yet so let's make this type converter sample and I'm going to change all the labels here or remove them actually and I'm going to add my own label here so um, let's say controls my control um, and I need to implement the XML namespace for it so add XML namespace um, and this is my sample name right here so it will implement it here um, at the top and it will now know my control and now I can set my text to whatever I want because that is the new property I added for my control um, and now whenever I say here I can say um, one and um, we we're gonna have to rerun this application but what's going to happen now is I set my text to one then it's gonna go to my control um, then it will will see this my text property right here and it sees that it has this type converter so before it goes through here um, just like I just said basically it's gonna to, um, get this type converter out here call this enum to text type converter um, it will go through the convert from invariant string so it will get here with the value of one then it will do the enum.parse it will get that one and it will turn it into not subbed boo um, and then it will return that description so we will see in our label um, the not subbed boo instead of the one so let's just stop the application and rerun it and see if that is what actually happens uh, that's always cool for a live demo um, 
but you know that is really cool and that is also how it works for like the the, the named font sizes and that kind of stuff there's a couple of places in examine forms where you can see this um, and here you see it has the right result so we're setting this one um, and it will turn that into this enum value. So that is a way to kind of like um, let users specify a more human readable form um, with like the font sizes that I just mentioned basically. Um, and But you can still use the other one, right? Um, it, 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 the logic how to convert from one to another is basically up to you. So you can also detect like, hey, um, the person said, uh, the developer set already a value that seems right, that's perfect, or we need to do some conversion. You can detect that yourself with the logic. And in the case of an enum.parse, you can also say like, hey, I already have the name in here. So um, I'm, I'm going to put this in here. Well, let's do another one else. It's not really clear. So let's say subbed because you have to be subscribed to my channel anyway. Um, so let's do that. And whenever I stop and read not run it again, you will see that it still kind of works. It will still detect that enum. It will still detect the, the subbed one. It will still parse correctly. And then it will just have this subbed value, right? So that is how type converters work in Xamarin forms. If you haven't really worked with this before, I could get that it's kind of like abstract maybe, it, it takes a little getting used to, maybe you have to play with it a little bit yourself. As always, of course, the source, the sample source can be found on my GitHub account. You can find the link down in the video description below, as well as a couple of other links to um, relevant documentation and even a blog post by um, Charlyn Agramonte. You may, might know her as Xam Girl, um, who has a very nice article on this as well. So be sure to check that out for a reference um, if you want to know more about this. Um, for the rest, thank you so much for watching again one of my videos. I would appreciate it if you click that like button if you actually like this video. Click that subscribe button if you like what you see on this channel and you want to support me. But also, you know, the content will come to you on your timeline instead of you having to go out and look for me, uh, which is, you know, a lot less effort. We are lazy developers, so definitely do that. And I will be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.